So now we're going to move on to having a look at the normal distribution and we're going to start off uh, by talking generally about finding probabilities linked to the normal distribution. Now the normal distribution is probably one of the most used distributions. Uh, the shape of the distribution follows a bell curve. I'm just going to sketch one here at the side. Oops, sorry. Just going to sketch one here at the side. So the shape of the normal distribution is something like this, where the central point of the normal distribution is the mean value. And when we're finding probabilities linked to the normal distribution, we are finding areas underneath the curve. Now, the other thing that determines the shape of the normal distribution, so the thing that makes this distribution here different from this distribution that I'm just drawing now, is that the blue one that I've just drawn is obviously less spread out. It has the same mean value, it has the same peak, but it is less spread out the data. This is determined by the standard deviation and we'll cover this more when we talk about properties of the normal distribution. However, the important thing to notice is that when we have less varied data, so when we have a smaller standard deviation like we do in the blue diagram there, the peak is much higher. Now, this is because, as we have talked about with all probability distributions, it's going to add up to one. And because, as I've just said, the area underneath the curve is going to be giving us our probabilities, the area under the curve is going to be one. So if we have a less spread out data, we are going to have a higher peak. So we normally use the normal distribution when we are looking at naturally occurring variables such as height and weight. These are usually normally distributed. Most people are usually of normal height or normal weight. And then you usually have a small number of short people and a small number of very tall people. Now, of course, if we're talking about height, we have to exclude children from this because they are obviously going to be smaller. And a similar factor for weight. Uh, the normal distribution is used only for continuous distributions. And this means that we can't find exact values. And this point here is very important that if we're looking at any specific value using the normal distribution, that value is going to be zero. And the reason for that is if we think about finding the probabilities, like I said, finding the probabilities is going to do, be done by looking at the area. If I'm looking at this area here, that has an obvious width and height, and I can see that it's been shaded in there. Whereas if I can't even draw it because it wouldn't have any thickness to it, but if this line that I'm drawing here now had a zero thickness to it, then you wouldn't be able to find the area because it wouldn't have a width and a height. It would just be a line which had no width to it and no height to it. So um, you wouldn't be able to find the area. So the probability of X equaling any specific value is zero. And this comes into play as well when we're looking at inequalities. There is no difference between a strict inequality and a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Uh, and this was different in binomial. In binomial, because that is what we call a discrete distribution, so it only looks at whole numbers, there it did make a difference whether it was a strict inequality or a less than or equal to, and we could also find equal to probabilities. In the normal distribution, there is no difference between the strict inequalities and the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to's, and we cannot find uh, the probability of x equaling any value. That's just going to be zero. Uh, and nicely, uh, if we, so if I select a student at random from this class, uh, what is the probability that they are taller than 150 centimetres? We could do that. 
what we'd have to do is we'd have to find the mean height of the class and the standard deviations of the heights in the class and then we would be able to find that probability. As we had the uh, with the binomial distribution, we can write the distribution of the normal distribution in this notation here. So x follows the normal distribution. So n is for normal, just like we had b for binomial. Hopefully that isn't too strange that we're using the letter of the first word. Uh, where this time mu is representing the mean and sigma is representing the standard deviation. And it's very important to notice that here in our distribution, this is the variance because it says sigma squared. So this is actually the variance, not the standard deviation, but it is the standard deviation squared as we talked about in the numerical measures section. So whenever we're using our probabilities, we're going to be using our finding our probabilities. We're going to be using our calculator. And for this, we're going to go into statistics, distribution, so dist, and we're going to be going into norm. And this is the same regardless of if you have an old version of the calculator or the newer version of the calculators. And for this first section, we're only going to be using NCD. Later on, we're going to be having a look at inverse normal. But we are never going to be using this first function, NPD. So we're only going to use the second and the third function. So as I said here, we're only going to be going in to NCD. So we're going to have a look at a couple of examples and then you can try some now you try questions. So we've got the chest measurements of an adult male customers for T-shirts may be modelled using the normal distribution where the mean is 101 and the standard deviation is 5. Find the probability that a randomly selected customer will have a chest measurement, which is, and then we're looking at the following categories. So we're first going to write down this distribution that we've been described here. So that's going to be X follows the normal distribution with a mean of 101 and a variance which is 5 squared. Now, I'm going to keep it as 5 squared. The reason for that being, if we have a look at what information we actually have to type into our calculator, you can see that it's actually the standard deviation that we need to write into our calculator. So instead of changing it to 25, just to change it back to 5 when I put it in my calculator, it's perfectly fine to leave this as 5 squared. Now, if you haven't been into this section of your calculator before, it might look like this, where you've got the list options. Just where it says data, change that to variable, and then you can enter in the bounds that you are needing to. So to start off with, we're trying to find the probability that the chest measurement is between 95 centimetres and 100 centimetres. If we write this using our probability notation, we would have P of 95 being less than X being less than 100, which means that 95 is our lower value, so we're going to put that into lower. Our upper value is going to be 100. The standard deviation, as we said before, is going to be 5. And the mean is going to be 101. And that gives us a probability of 0.306 to three significant figures. Now for the second and third part of these questions and going on to the fourth as well, this time we're looking at less than 103. So the probability that X is less than 103. So this time we don't have a lower value. Now because the normal distribution is a continuous distribution, theoretically it could go on forever in either direction. However, when we get onto the uh, properties of the normal distribution later on, you'll see that there are some constraints for it in order for it to follow the normal distribution. However, in order to make sure that we are using the correct values, we know that the upper is going to be 103, as we've got written here. But for the lower, what we're going to put in is a really big negative number. So we're going to put minus 9999999999, lots of nines. And this just ensures that we're not losing some of our area by putting in a lower bound that isn't small enough. 
The standard deviation is still 5 and the mean is still 101. And that gives us a probability of 0 0.655 to three significant figures. Now for the third part here, we're looking at more than 98. So probability that X is bigger than 98, written like this using our probability notation. So this time we know what the lower value is going to be. That's going to be 98. But we don't know what the upper bound is going to be on this. So just as we just did for the lower bound then, we're now going to put in a really big positive number this time. So we're just going to put in a lot of nines. Nine, 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 nine. The standard deviation is still 5 and the mean is still 101. And this gives us a probability of 0.726 to 3 significant figures. Now we're looking at the probability that we have 109 or less. So this is that x is less than or equal to 109. And as we talked about in the second question here, we know what the biggest value is, that's 109. And the lower bound is going to be minus a really big number, so minus 9999999. Notice how there was no difference between the way that I entered the second one and the way that I entered the third one. And this is because of what I was just talking about previously, that we treat strict inequalities in a similar way to less than or equal twos with the normal distribution, because the, it, the probability being equal to a value doesn't make a difference here, uh, because it would be zero. The probability of x equaling any number would be zero. So that gives us a probability of 0.945. So I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try questions a go, making sure that you write the worded questions with the correct probability notation before finding the probabilities. Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video and you've given the now you try questions a go. And we can see here that uh, I've filled in the answers. So for the first one, writing it in the probability notation, we'd have P of 90 being less than X being less than 110 which should give us 0.950 to three significant figures. For the second one, probability of x being less than 100. So remember that 100 is going in our upper and minus 9999999 goes in our lower, which gives us a probability of 0.421. More than 102, so this time 102 is going in our lower and 9999999 is going in our upper, uh, which gives us 0.421 again. And then... For the last one, 103 centimetres or more, we're having a look at greater than or equal to 103, which gives us 0 0.345. Now, I think that having a look at these middle two is quite interesting, and this re-emphasises uh, one of the aspects of the normal distribution, that these probabilities are ending up the same. If you think that's what this distribution actually is, we are looking at our bell-shaped curve where the mean is 101. Now, looking at both of these values, we can see that this one here is 100, which let's say is here. And we're looking at this area here, less than, or e less than 100. And on the other side, for this one here, we're looking at greater than 102. Now, because this is meant to be a perfect bell-shaped curve, this is also symmetrical, which means that half of the data is going to be less than 101 and half of the data is going to be more than 101. And because 100 and 102 are equidistant from 101, they are only one below and one above, it makes sense that the area below 100 is exactly the same as the area above 102. And I think it's quite a nice way to see uh, one of the main aspects of the normal distribution there. So, next time we are going to have a look at how we can work backwards with the normal distribution. So, if we are given the probability, how we can find the value that gives us that probability. Just one main thing that you need to be careful of when finding probabilities with the normal distribution is if you are given the distribution written using the correct notation, so our x squiggle n, 
let's say 12, 9. Remember that this value at the end here, this 9, that is the variance. And we need to be careful because in our calculator, we need to be put in the standard deviation, which in this case would be 3. Remembering as well that the standard deviation is always positive. You can have a look at the formula for that to see why it's always positive, uh, which we come to using in the summary statistics section. Uh, so it's always the positive square root of the variance that we take for our standard deviation. You cannot have a negative standard deviation. So we always take the positive version. Thank you very much for listening.